Ukraine's I Want to Live project encourages North Korean soldiers in the Russian army to surrender. According to its Telegram channel, the message urges North Korean soldiers not to die in a foreign land and to avoid the fate of many Russian soldiers who won't return home. The project assures that Ukraine will offer asylum to North Korean troops and that Ukraine's prisoner of war camps are ready to accept soldiers of any nationality or belief. It notes that many Russian soldiers who chose to surrender, with comfortable housing, three meals a day, and medical care. Ukrainian military expert Ivan Kirichevsky said that colonialist stereotypes about North Korean troops should be avoided. In the Russian assault units, we are fighting against the social lower classes without proper education or military training, but even they pose significant problems. In the case of North Korea, we are talking about career military personnel with a certain amount of ideological training and fanaticism. Another observation worth making is that two communist states lived in isolation after the collapse of the Soviet Union, North Korea and Cuba. Now, North Korea is causing us a lot of problems, but what about Cuba? We only know that there is no electricity there, that's all," he added. If we talk about the North Korean troops' presence on the territory of the Russian Federation, we can fully trust the data released by the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine that there should be, relatively speaking, so-called special operations forces. By local standards, these are troops that should be better trained than the rest of the infantry. However, they are said to be undergoing a short three-week retraining course according to Russian standards, which indicates that the Russians plan to use them as assault infantry with a corresponding cycle of survivability, the military expert said. North Korea is a post-Soviet country with a corresponding system of training, management and military strategy. Although there are some adaptive aspects, in general, it will not create major difficulties. At the staff level, if the North Korean and Russian command centers are coordinated, this will facilitate the process, as commands will be transmitted to the Korean staffs, and they will transmit them in Russian. Translators will do their job, and the commands will reach the troops in whatever language is needed to complete the task. Widespread flooding and landslides set off by a tropical storm in the northeastern Philippines on Thursday left at least 24 people dead, swept away cars and prompted authorities to scramble for motorboats to rescue trapped villagers, some on roofs. The government shut down schools and offices, except those urgently needed for disaster response, for the second day on the entire main island of Luzon to protect millions of people after tropical storm Trami slammed into the country's northeastern province of Isabela after midnight. The storm was blowing over Aguinaldo town in the mountain province of Ifugo after dawn with sustained winds up to 95 km per hour and gusts up to 160 km per hour. It was blowing westward and was forecast to enter the South China Sea later on Thursday, according to state forecasters. At least 24 people died, mostly due to drowning in the hard-hit Baikal region and nearby Quezon province but the toll was expected to rise as towns and villages isolated by flooding and roads blocked by landslides and toppled trees managed to send out reports, police and provincial officials said. Most of the storm deaths were reported in the six-province Baikal region, southeast of Manila, where at least 20 people died, including seven residents in Naga City, which was inundated by flash floods as Trami was approaching Tuesday, dumping more than two months' worth of rainfall in just 24 hours at high tide, Regional Police Chief Brig General Andre Dizon and other officials said. While thousands of villagers, who were trapped in floodwaters, have been rescued by government forces, many more needed to be saved Thursday in the Baikal region, including some on roofs. About 1,500 police officers have been deployed for disaster mitigation work, Dizon said. Stormy weather remained in the region, hampering relief efforts, officials said. The government's disaster mitigation agency said more than 2 million people were affected by the storm, including 75,400 villagers who were displaced from their homes and are sheltering on safer ground. About 20 storms and typhoons batter the Philippines each year. In 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, one of the strongest recorded tropical cyclones in the world, left more than 7,300 people dead or missing and flattened entire villages.
Uh, Lumigas po kasi binabaha po kami doon. Okay. Tapos pagsabi po yung barangay na lilitas kami. Kasi nga mahirap na yung mangyari ulit yung nakaraan. Uh, lumigas kami, malaki na yung tubig. Kaya hanggat maaga, lumigas na kami para hindi kami mahirapan.